Welcome to this video where we're going to go over section 2.2 in the new IDSSE Marine Science book. Everything here is just for my class and any mistakes are mine and mine alone. It does not reflect on Cambridge, but if any other class can use it, you're more than welcome. So in section 2.1, we looked at the kinetic model and here in 2.2, we're going to have a look at the different definitions of element compound and mixtures. This is basic chemistry, but if you haven't had it, this can be a bit challenging and I really recommend you spend a little time looking at it uh, in the textbook. Elements are what we would in normal physics call the atoms. It is something that cannot be split further down. Of course it can if you have like access to a particular accelerator and stuff like that, but that's outside the scope of the syllabus. Um, elements are the stuff we see in the periodic table. They come in different isotopes, different version. So for example, oxygen is an element, so is carbon, so is iron. Where for example, CO2 is not an element, that's a molecule. So all the elements have uh, different properties, uh, depending on if it's a metal, if it's a gas and so on, it's a noble gases. So um, elements can here also be seen as, in, in the book here, they also say that oxygen is an element because it contains two oxygen atoms together. Uh, that's the way of defining it here, so please go by that. Normally I would only say that each part of the periodic table is an element. But anyway, this is how they do it in this book this time. A compound is a substance containing particles made from two or more different types of atoms two or more type of elements. Um, like elements, compounds have a fixed melting point, fixed boiling points. CO2, for example, is a compound. Uh, the particles are in a regular arrangement, for example, in CO2 or in methane. Uh, compounds must contain at least two atoms of different elements. Um, for example, CO2, glucose, and water are all compounds and are important for what we're working with here in marine science. A mixture is a substance containing different types of particles. Uh, a mixture must contain different elements, but unlike a compound, the substances in a mixture are not in a fixed ratio. So, for example, sodium chloride and water is a mixture, but you can have different concentrations of sodium chloride in your uh, mixture here. Seawater is a classical mixture. Because we've got sodium chloride in it, we got magnesium, we got iron, we got different um, trace elements, so it's a mixture. So here's a way of seeing the different things. Argon, the noble gas, is an element. In this case here, we all see oxygen as an element, because oxygen atoms join together in pairs for oxygen, a molecule of oxygen. A compound here as CO2, while we have atmospheric air as a mixture. So, talking about things dissolving, and here it gets a little harder uh, vocabulary wise because many of the words sound almost the same. So, we have a solid, something we add to the water, or the liquid we try and dissolve things in. The solid that dissolves is called a solute and the liquid we're dissolving in is called a solvent and whatever we end up with the mixture is called the solution so for example if I take some sodium chloride that's a solute I have some water that's my solvent and mixed together that becomes a solution or if you want to quote Homer Simpson alcohol beer is a solution Here we see the example again, the salt is a solid, the water is a solvent, and mixed together we have a solution of sodium chloride and water. A solid that dissolves well is described as being soluble, while one that has, does not dissolve is a insoluble. So for example, if I add sodium chloride to water, it dissolves easily, but if I add, for example, 
gold dust, it will have very, very hard time dissolving in water. So, how easy or hard things are to dissolve um, is quite important in the chemistry of seawater. Salts, as we call it, salt water, salts are compounds made of ions. These ions are attracted to each other in a crystal structure. Normally, like if you see table salt, it's a white crystal, but when it comes into water, it will break up, it will, um, the solvent, the water, will break up the molecule, and then we'll have the solution. Salinity in seawater is a very important thing, very uh, important feature in marine biology, and we measure salinity in parts per thousand. So, like average seawater is around 35 parts per thousand, which gives us a percentage of salt around 3.5%. But it's not only sodium chloride we have here, we also have other ions that are magnesium, that's calcium, that's iron. And salinity is not the same everywhere in the ocean. Most famous example is the Dead Sea in Israel, where the salinity is super high. Uh, on the other hand, if you have places, for example, in the Baltic Sea, we have a lot of rivers running into the Baltic Sea. There's a lot of fresh water moving into it, and then the salinity will be lower. In general, we see a higher salinity around the subtropics, where we have a lot of evaporation. Um, uh, and we have a lower salinity um, in the Arctic regions in general. So this slide here is a good one to remember because this is a question very, very often seen in the final um, exam questions in marine science. They ask, what kind of uh, environmental factors will affect salinity? And salinity can go up and down. And basically it goes up, salinity increases when water leaves. So in a hot day, evaporation, you know, water molecules leave, but the salt ions will stay there. So the salt concentration will go up. There'll be more salt in the water. On the other hand, if we have a rainy day, we have a lot of rain falling on the surface, that'll be add more fresh water and salinity will go down. If you have a runoff full of fresh water, of course, then salinity will go down. And if you have melting ice, uh, which is fresh water, running into the ocean either from melting icebergs or from land-based ice, that will also lower the salinity. So it's important to remember that warm water um, is less dense, and then as it gets really warm, we have a lot of evaporation, but the salt will still stay, stay there, so salinity will go up in that case. Sometimes a large river meets the ocean in a partly enclosed tidal area called a eustuary. As the tide changes, the salinity of the water in the eustuary can change a lot. Um, so when the tide comes in, salinity will go up, and when the tide go goes out and fresh water moves uh, in it takes its place, salinity will go down. This constant change in salinity makes it, uh, life difficult for organisms that live in this water, but it also makes for very productive waters, as we'll see when we look at specific usuries later on. Water has the uh, compound, has a formula H2O, two hydrogen and one oxygen. A very small number of water molecules split up to form either hydrogen ions, or hydroxide ions, um, and in general, when those are in balance, we have the same amount of those, well, then our water will be neutral at a pH of 7. Well, some substances will dissolve in water to produce a solution that is acidic. That will lower the pH below 7, there will be more H pluses. Other substances dissolve in water to produce a solution that's alkaline, which means we'll have more hydroxide ion and pH will be above 7. Um, in general, we say 7 is neutral. Uh, seawater has a pH of approximately 8.1, so it's slightly alkaline. And this is because there's a large quantities of calcium carbonate uh, in the seabed. And also, uh, the calcium ions react with water to produce uh, hydrocarbonic ions and hydroxide ions, and this increases the pH uh, above 7 which will make seawater weakly alkaline.
On the other hand, if we add a lot of CO2 to water, it will lower the pH and can even turn the water slightly acidic due to increased amount of carbon dioxide. Last thing we'll be looking at are dissolved gases. It's not just solid that can dissolve in water, gases can too. Most organisms that live in the ocean or the ocean bed, they need to obtain either CO2, carbon dioxide, or O2 to live. Plants need CO2 and uh, animals will need the O2. Uh, gases, they dissolve in water, but the solubility of gases in water is quite low, and the higher the temperature, the lower the solubility. Um, in general, um, if we are close to the surface, then oxygen and CO2 will then diffuse into seawater and dissolve, especially if we have a lot of wave action. Um, two gases making up most of the atmosphere are nitrogen and oxygen. Um, in the oceans, however, the dissolved gases have different properties. Um, so nitrogen takes 78% of the atmosphere, but only 11% of the gases in the ocean. Uh, oxygen takes 21% of the atmosphere, but just around 6% of the gas in the ocean. While CO2 has a very large amount, simply because uh, CO2 can dissolve quite well and also form carbonic acid in the water. The important thing is here to remember is that the higher the temperature, the lower the concentration of dissolved gases. And the way to remember this is to think about a cold Coca-Cola and a warm Coca-Cola. The cold one will keep its bubbles, the dissolved gas, while a warm one will lose its bubble and become like dull and boring.